I'm streaming live. I don't know if anyone's on here yet, but it's kind of getting shifted around a bit. Nope, no viewers yet. That's okay. Um, I'm going to start talking, though, as people come along, if they do. I had about 23 viewers on the first stream an hour ago, and I went for 40 minutes or so and covered a lot. So uh, I don't know if there's anybody left that is planning on tuning in at 11 instead of 10, but I'm here, and I'll be, if people... Come on, then. Oh, I'm getting some feedback that my audio is really quiet. So let me try. I mean, I don't want to bump it too much. Is that? That must be Austin. Um, are you on right now, Austin, or are you? Is this left over from the earlier chat? I mean, are you commenting on the earlier the playback video, or are you listening right now? So Austin says he's live. I mean, you can see uh, you can see my OBS settings here. I'm, I'm afraid to tweak it too much into the yellow, but I can try. Um, is that better or about the same? You can also, I mean, you can message me in Slack too. And, and there's kind of a five second delay on these things. So um, let me know if it's any better now. I mean, I will. I can talk louder too. That's another thing. Um, feedback on the first one, they said it was okay, the audio was fine, so I, I'm, I don't think I've changed anything. Yes, good morning. Hi, Aaron. Uh, Aaron. Oh, I'm up to seven viewers, great. Hello, good morning. Welcome to DGST 101. And let me know how the audio is. Uh, Austin said it wasn't great, and so I've tried to increase it a little bit. If you, if you have trouble hearing, please let me know. I'm keeping an eye on the chat. Um, I've got two different windows going here, so that's what's going on. Um, all right, great. Uh, so I, I'm going to kind of slowly get started here in case people are trying to get on still. Um, this is not a lecture. It's just uh, I want to go over a few things in terms of how this class is going to be shifting as we go online. And I already covered um, I covered it once in the first video, which you could rewatch if you want. Um, but I, but you're here now, so there, so I will go through some things um, in a moment. I'm kind of waiting to hear from Austin if the audio is okay at this point. So let me know. There he is. Okay. He said that's all right, though. Yeah, I mean, I, I, well, one thing, I mean, I'm just using this webcam. I mean, you can't see it, but I'm, I'm using this webcam microphone, and I think, and I don't have any settings on it. Like, um, I can't change the gain on it, for example. Um, I can probably borrow a condenser mic, and that will improve the audio quality and also probably give me more ability to tweak it. So I'm just going to go ahead at this volume, and hopefully it's good enough, and uh, I'll try. I'll, I'll listen to the playback, playback later myself, too, and kind of troubleshoot it. I already did it earlier, and it seemed okay or good enough, um, but lower than other streams, like when I compared them. So I could turn it up myself. I could turn up my stream loud enough to hear it okay, but then others were... were um, not as good. The other thing too, if you notice, I'm going to stop talking for a second. So that right there, that little green that's still there, even when I um, stop talking, that's just background noise. It's actually, I think, the fan from this PC. And if I had a condenser mic, that would be eliminated probably. So um, I don't want to make it, if I turn my audio up higher, it'll include a lot more of that. And so that's where I, why I've got it set the way it is. But anyway, I'm just going to go ahead. Hopefully it's all right. Uh, up to nine viewers. Welcome. Good morning. Uh, okay, so I'm monitoring the chat in Twitch and in Slack, so if you have questions or comments as we go, then please let me, please jump into either of those, and I'll try to respond or, or whatever. Um, a couple of questions that I posed in Slack and on the Twitch stream, as you can see, um, just kind of general things to, to give, for you to give me some something. Um, uh, first of all, you know, I want to know how, how you're doing. Um, that can be either just generally or technologically, um, you know, I'm okay, obviously, I'm here on campus. Uh, it's very quiet on campus. I was noticing as I came in, I didn't see a single other person, um, but then I just stepped out a minute ago and I did see a few people around the HCC. Um, so, you know, so maybe some of you are actually here. I don't know, I haven't seen any of you, but if you're here, that's, that's good, I guess. Um, but I'm gonna send out a survey in a moment. This is a Google survey here. I'm gonna send this through Slack. Um, this is just kind of to let me know a bit more formally, like, 
how are you doing? And also, try, I'm trying to see how, what kind of access people have to technology. Where's my slash window? Okay. Um, and I, I don't take for granted that it, all of you are able to access these streams, so um, I'm not going to be doing things in these streams that are unique, like they will be repeated other places as well, but it's probably more efficient if you can tune into these just to hear it once, basically. Uh, okay, so let me kind of talk through some general things about how this class is shifting. The big one, obviously, is that we're not going to be able to do the digital archaeology project the same way, uh, but I do have a Plan B version of that, and I just posted it this morning in Slack, I mean in Canvas. This is uh, actually drawn from the online version of this class that I've been doing for a while anyway, so this, is, this was pretty easy for me to uh, spin up here. And if you read through it, it's really, uh, I call it an object lesson in that case because it's not necessarily as deconstructive as the version that we started uh, working with. So, let's see, Olivia's saying hi, great. Um, yeah, I'm, almost everybody's talking about they were looking forward to the archaeology project. I definitely was. It's the highlight of my semester, honestly. So, uh, I'm, I'm disappointed, but we, we're doing what we have to. Um, so in this backup version of it, it's it's a scale down a bit, and it's meant to be an individual project, so you're working on your own. Um, if you still want to take something apart, you can, but you don't necessarily have to, um, and I'll show you what those options are. So um, you still need to choose an object. You should have a single object, a device of some sort that you're taking apart or looking at and thinking about, if not taking apart. Um, the same safety considerations, of course, apply. Don't take apart a CRT TV. Um, watch out for anything that anything like that, um, really. Um, uh, so if you do want to do that, you notice this is optional. You'll need to think about your work area, think about some tools. Um, you know, those, those, you may not have those, and that's the main reason why this is optional. If you do have them, and if you, or if your device turns out to just have Phillips head screws, then by all means, um, you're welcome to. Uh, but in any case, uh, choose a story. So you remember in, in the game Phone Story, we looked at four different stages in the life cycle of an object. So there was the, um, the mining phase, there was the manufacturing phase, the retail phase, and then the recycling phase. Um, just to get that simplify a little bit, uh, we can look at three potential stories to tell about any object, a prehistory, a lived history, and an afterlife. So there's a similar structure here, but somewhat simplified. Um, the prehistory would include the mineral extraction and the manufacturing, um, but it, I'm asking you to tell this story and just in terms, just practically, getting back to that mineral extraction phrase is really hard to actually have any reliable information about. So uh, I'm not really suggesting that you have to do that. Um, if you can, great, um, but if I, I would probably, I'd recommend focusing your energy elsewhere to be honest, just because it's just too much, it's too much guessing basically. Um, so choose one of these stories, prehistory, lived history, or afterlife. Um, you could combine these two, I guess, but um, those are the three different things I'm thinking about. The lived history is the uh, time that you owned the device. So if you're thinking about like an old phone, um, the lived history of that phone is when that was your phone that you used, the, your primary phone. So think about when you got it, when you stopped using it, and everything in between. That's the lived history that, that you might, can talk about with that. And then the afterlife. The afterlife is honestly a bit more like science fiction, like you're speculating about what may happen to this in the future. So recycling and is obviously a practical thing you can do in a lot of cases, but then what happens when it gets recycled? Um, there are some things we can learn about what happens with e-waste recycling, but uh, it is a lot of speculation and, and kind of best case scenario kind of guesswork. So you know that's a bit more creatively oriented. So if you're going to do the prehistory, these are some of the links to the same kinds of things we already talked about the other day when I did the demo. Um, you know That part is basically the same as far as the research. The lived history, this is, uh, again, your life with this device, when this was your device. So that's something you know about. And so you, as you think about maybe different objects, different devices, then you'll need to think about a device that has some meaning if you're considering this story. Like you have to actually have an idea of its lived history to be able to tell that. If the lived history is that you just got it from Goodwill the other day, you're going to have to guess a lot at that lived history. Um, I mean, I guess you still could do that, but it'll be, uh, I think, a bit harder. So I wouldn't really recommend that. I, this is where I would really recommend get one of your own devices if you're considering story option number two. Uh, and then finally, the afterlife, again, you're speculating, but we'll be learning, learning a lot about recycling and, and what actually happens and what, where things go. Um, okay, so um, 
moving on a bit. So initially, I had you all using Omeka, and Omeka is great. Uh, Omeka, though, is a bit of work, and to be honest, it's really not worth that much work, or it's not worth the work to kind of bootstrap up an entire Omeka site around a project that's scaled back the way this one has been. So instead, I'm recommending you use something called Timeline.js. You could use another tool if you have one that you like better. Um, if you want to use something like that, just you want to be able to tell a story with time and space in it, ideally. So Timeline.js lets you do that, and I can show you how. Story map.js is another thing, but that's more oriented around space. Um, if you still want to use Omeka, you are welcome to, and you can install it on your domain and work with it that way. Or if you'd like to work with it in my installation, just let me know and I can set one up for you. Um, but in general, I think Timeline will be easier for an individual, one of you, each of you to work with on your own. Uh, okay, so I'll show you how to get that, but it's basically a timeline tool, and within that timeline, I want you to come up with at least 10 events on the timeline of your device, the story that you're telling about it, and for each of those events, you should have a date, you should have a place if possible. Sometimes you might have to be vague about that part of it. Um, there should be some description, and there should be some kind of uh, sourcing, like some idea of how you know this thing at that point. Uh, it might just be your personal memory, but you need to acknowledge that or make that clear when you tell the story about it. Okay, once, it's cl once that's done, then this is going to be shared and on your, you'll be posting this live and then you'll be um, posting a blog entry about it. Um, I, Devin is asking if I'm live and I am, I think I am. Uh, let me try, I don't know if I can send this link again. Um, and Gina's typing too. So, okay, I want to make sure I can get everybody in here if possible. Let me see. Um, I mean, some people, so earlier, Maddie found she had to click, I had to share the link while I was live, and then she clicked it and so said it was, it worked. I don't know why it would be different. I have to look at my Steam account credentials. Um, I was trying to set up my Steam account, by the way, on here so I could actually stream games from this computer, but um, I can't. I, mean, I don't have admin privileges on this computer, so I couldn't fully install it, and I think that's why it didn't actually work. Uh, okay, so I just picked up a new viewer. Maybe that's Devin. Um, okay, so I'm going to... And Ian is also typing. So, okay, so we'll see. Hopefully they'll get in. I don't know. I mean, it's the same URL. There's nothing different about the, like, actual text there. If you just go through Twitch, it shows you're offline. The link is what shows you're online. I don't really, under I don't really understand the difference between those two. <laughs> um, I mean, I can... I think this will look weird if I pull it up here, but I can try. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm looking. Here's me looking at myself, looking at myself. Um, so, I mean, this is. I mean, this is the same link. Although I'm, I'm obviously I'm already logged in. That may be why it pulls me up automatically. I don't know. I mean, I'm archiving these anyway, so if you're just tuning in now, you really haven't missed anything that you couldn't watch later, and really ha I haven't covered much, so um, you're fine. But I want to make sure everyone's here. You just go through your Twitch. Okay, so, well, I mean, Ian, yeah, you're online. That's, that's good, but um, I like these infinite tunnels, by the way. <laughs> it's kind of fun. I'm using OBS to broadcast this, and you can make these infinite tunnels very quickly with that. Um, so, looks like Jean is typing, but I don't know if she's online or not. I mean, online on the stream. But if Ian's here. Well, okay, so I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to keep going, and then if you have, if we continue to need to troubleshoot this, then let's go. <laughs> I don't think I have Conquer's Bad Fur Day. Um, <laughs> so, maybe I do. I can't remember. I've got a lot of those packed away. <laughs> but you're welcome to unfollow us if you have to often. Uh, okay, so let me, I'm going to shut this off. So this is interesting. I don't see anything in the chat room on this view, but I do on my stream manager view, which is, 
I thought would be the same, but I don't know. If you're still getting used to Twitch, obviously. So let me go back to some class things. We're up to nine viewers, so good morning. Hello, if you're just joining me. So far, I've just talked about how the digital archaeology assignment is different. It's basically an individual assignment now, and you have three options. And instead of using Omeka to share your, your findings, then I'd like for you to use something called Timeline.js. And I can give you a quick tour of that. It's um, pretty straight. Well, it's not, I don't know if straightforward is the right word, but it, it's, once you get used to it, it's fine. So it's at this website, timeline.nightlab.com. And I'll link to this, or it is linked in the assignment. You can do that. I just want to show you a few steps. Some of them might not be obvious. So you click on Make a Timeline, you go to get the spreadsheet template, and you click Make a Copy. And this is going to open it into your Google Drive, so you need to be already logged into Google Drive for this to work. And let's just make another demo. Ten viewers. Hello. And that must be Devin. So, hi, Devin. Welcome. Um, So Devin, I'm just starting off Timeline.js, and I've already talked a little bit about the um, differences to the assignments. You can read about them in Canvas. Basically, it's an individual assignment now, and you'll be using Timeline.js instead of Omeka. And I'll do some more instruction around Timeline.js. I just thought I'd show it while I have the stream here. So this is the back end, or the database. Um, and this is going to create the timeline view. This isn't the timeline view yet. To make it visible, you have to go to file and then publish to the web and then hit publish and yes and then this gives you a URL that you can copy and then you go back to the, the night lab page timeline.nightlab.com and I've already got the spreadsheet template and this shows you the process that I just did and you go down here to paste the URL you just paste it once and what it says invalid URL did I get the wrong yeah isn't that what I just did I just did that. Disregard. This is disregard the publish to the web URL. I got it. Okay, so this is the one they want. This is a slight difference. I don't really know what the difference is. But, okay, seems happier now. And then we can preview it. We can also just open the preview in another window. This is their template data, so there's nothing like specific about this yet that is obvious that I've done anything, but. Um, this is the story of my. I wouldn't actually recommend making a title this long, but I just want to show you what, what what changes. So when you go here, change that, then it should change on this first slide. So this is basically like a like a slideshow, but as it moves through time, it moves through time, and then you can embed different media. You can also embed a map. So that's something that I can show you. That's a little bit. It's not explained in the documentation, but let's say I wanted to. Where am I? I'm about right here. Um, how do I pin this place? Uh, how do I, oh yeah, there it is. So I think this is all you need to do. So this is a pin that I found in, that's a, in, in Google Maps. I think I can just put this directly into my spreadsheet. And so instead of this one, I'll say, here's where I am now. This is, again, not what you would be doing for this actual assignment, but I just want to see if this works. It should just embed a little map of where I am. <laughs> yeah, OK, kind of. It didn't zoom in right. But anyway, this is a way that you can, like if your story does have specific places, then you should do something like this to convey that. Anyway, I just wanted to notice to, to get that through. Um, let's see, what did Austin? Oh, okay. So Ian has provided some really helpful information here, which is that I, I committed an error, <laughs> that I have a typo, that I, it's not Zach Whale, it's Zach Whalen. So that's, um, that is my name with an N on the end of that. So that does explain why that link didn't work. And whoever Zach Whale is, is there someone with that? Let's find out. Whoever that is is not online right now, I guess. Is this a real account? I guess so. 
and there's 68 views, that's probably all of you trying to get into it. <laughs> so, uh, okay, well, that's obviously incorrect, so don't go to that one, whoever that, if, if, whoever that is, if that's a person. Um, I guess that is. I mean, it must be, or else it would give us a 404 or something else. Like, let's just try a random thing. Yeah, so if you go, okay, so basically what I'm confirming here is that this is what you would get if that were not an account, but because you've got an offline account, that is someone else's account, but that's not me. <laughs> okay, anyway. So I just was just showing you Timeline.js a little bit, and I'll show you some more. Maybe I'll do a video just about Timeline.js. Uh, okay, great. So looking at some things here from... Yeah, so I'm interested, Emily, you're noting that one of your classes is completely changing the material. I'm kind of curious about that because certainly some classes I can imagine would have to shift, like uh, Marcus in the other section was talking about, um, like the ukulele building class. Like, I don't know how you would, like, there's no way to do that on your own without the tools or the um, workspace for that. Uh, but I am curious about any other classes that might have to change dramatically. Ours will not have to change dramatically, um, but I'm kind of curious how people are going to deal with that. Uh, okay, so uh, let me, I, so that, that's, if, if by the way you have any questions, please ask them in Slack or the Twitch chat so I can answer them on the stream if possible. Um, but if you have questions later, of course, there's lots of ways to get in touch with me. Uh, so this, this is the digital, this is the, yeah, the digital archaeology plan B. So I put an announcement out earlier. This is um, explaining what's going to go on this week. And, you know, we'll kind of take this week by week. Um, but here's the basic plan for this week. I do have references to dates. So today's Monday to March 16th. I'm also uh, going to be streaming again on Wednesday and Friday, I guess. Uh, I mean, I plan to right now. Um, that may change, but that's my plan at this point. Um, by then, uh, at least by Wednesday, make sure you've done these two things. And then by Friday, make sure you've had this discussion. Let me talk about each of these a little bit in detail. So first of all, there's two things. Um, we are, if you remember with the, the phone story, we thought about how that video game gave us an idea or tried to convince us of things using the rhetoric of video games. And then with the essay, we thought about how that writer used narrative or storytelling to get his ideas across. So we're gonna be looking at some other ideas, but looking at a different methodology or a different, not methodology, a different um, media format, a different medium for getting those ideas across, a different modality. And that's audio. So there's two episodes of the podcast, um, This American Life, that I'd like for you to um, experience. Um, I say experience because this one you have to read. It is no longer available to listen to, so you have to read this one, and I've got a link to this transcript. It's called Mr. Daisy and the Apple Factory. Um, and as you notice here, this, they do strongly encourage you to, the, to listen to the audio. That's, that's just a generic note, I think, because they've actually removed the audio of this particular episode from their website, which you can learn about uh, on this other episode, which you can and should listen to. So this one is called Retraction, and it's really about what they learned about the other episode and why they retracted it. So it's really interesting. Um, please listen to this. So this is one that is well, this, this particular episode is well known for um, a pr couple of really interesting moments in this, and I want you to pay attention to how the editing of those moments creates the tension and kind of helps, helps shape how you think about what's going on. Um, you'll see what I'm talking about when you get there, and we'll talk about it later. But that's something to definitely, I want you to experience in audio. Um, okay, so uh, Brian says he's at Lake Anna. Um, I guess, I mean, last time I was at Lake Anna, I could not find anywhere with, or in that area, I could not find anywhere with internet. Obviously, you are able to do that, so that's great. Um, but that's like, um, that was a big challenge for me couple summers ago when my daughters were doing a day camp at Lake Anna and I thought oh cool I'll just hang out and find like a McDonald's or something with Wi-Fi and like the closest McDonald's from where I was in Lake Anna uh, was like in Culpeper I think so it was kind of frustrating to have to do all that driving it was, it's like either Culpeper or uh, Spotsylvania and like Spotsylvania courthouse area anyway that was a, a lot of driving that week anyway um, so take a look at that. Oh, this is something else. Sorry. Um, so take a li so listen to this episode. Uh, read the other one, and um, I'll I'll talk about or, or you know share some ideas about that on on Wednesday, and with another Twitch stream, and then on Friday or by Friday, let's say uh, this is just to kind of keep you on track with things. By Friday, uh, I want you to have a conversation about this with your digital culture group, and you've got two probably two different ways to talk to them. You can either talk over Slack if you already have a channel, 
set up for that. Or as I was showing you here, you can also have a discussion. This is group section one, group one. This is their homepage. But every group actually has a homepage in Canvas. And you can use, if I get back all the way to it. Yeah, so you can use that if you want. So for this is section two, right? Um, so if you visit the group homepage, you do have a discussion. And you can also make announcements in there. And you can do it that way. This is good for asynchronous conversation. So asynchronous meaning not at the same time. So one person posts something, and then other people follow up. The, um, the um, how long is the episode? Oh, the um, this is Aaron asking a question. How long is it? You mean the if you mean the This American Life episode? I don't know off the top of my head. Um, I mean, usually when they play them on the radio, it takes up an hour, so it's less than an hour. Um, but you can see, like each of these acts has its own time. So this is a twelve act three is twelve minutes, act two is fifteen, act one was twenty one. So those are kind of chunked into sections that make it easy to. Um, separate. And of course, you can listen to those three acts at different times. But yeah, definitely do that. Uh, yeah, so back to discussion. Again, like this is asynchronous, not at the same time kind of communication. So what you might want to do is start off, a, somebody start a thread with these discussion starters and then follow up each of those, or maybe even make separate threads. It's up to you. Uh, but that's a asynchronous, so that's something that all of you can participate in whenever it's convenient for you to, whenever you have access to it. It's not something you have to be online for at the same time. If you do want to do things uh, synchronously, so at the same time, you'll need to coordinate that a little bit. Um, I think that is a good use of Slack. Like if you're text chatting in Slack at the same time, like if you're all online at the same time, I think that does go pretty well. Um, you could even, I think you can do, you can do phone calls in Slack. I don't know if you can do group calls, but you could try that, I guess, or you could try Zoom. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can do these things. I've been using something, well, I haven't used it yet actually, but I just discovered something recently called whereby.com, and you can go here and um, this is, I just have a, chat, a video chat room set up, and you can just make a quick kind of um, disposable chat room, essentially, a video chat room. It's not as much work to sign up for as like Zoom and other things like that. You don't have to set anything up or create an account or download anything. You just go to a web browser, and then you're in there. So um, that might be a good way to have a, a video chat with your group if you want to. Uh, but just if you do, if you consider that, just make sure all of the everyone in the group has access to that, and you can all do that. Like, don't leave anyone out if you want to try to do that kind of conversation. OK, so um, I've talked a bit about the changes to the archaeology project, which is now an individual thing. And we'll be using Timeline JS probably instead of Omeka. Um, I've talked about some of what we're going to do this week, which is going to be looking at the uh, factory, the, the um, production of objects. And then uh, the last thing I wanted to mention is the summary and reflection. So this is a new kind of assignment that I'm creating. And I want to explain it. I mean, it's not basically, OK, so when I teach online the, and when anyone teaches online, the biggest challenge is um, kind of seeing how it's going with the class. Like, I can put things out there, but um, I don't know if it's getting across. I don't always know if people are participating or if they're on, in tune with things. In a face-to-face -face class, it's off, I do a lot to pay attention to that. Like I take role, I kind of watch you react to things. And there's lots of ways that I might notice that you're missing things or that you're not picking up on things, right? Like if you're not coming to class, that's something that I notice, and then I can then reach out to follow up and find out what's going on. Or if you're in class but you don't seem to be getting it, I can tell through body language and other things that you're not getting it. Um, all that's missing in an online class. And what I found in online classes is that if one of you, if a student is kind of drifting away or failing to connect with the class, um, I may not know that until it's too late to do anything about it. So um, I'm thinking of these summary and reflection assignments as a way for you to confirm that you're getting things and keeping up with things. So um, don't stress out too much about like what to put in these. Uh, I just kind of want a sense that, I, I want to get a sense that you're on top of things, basically. Um, so you can, it's a complete or incomplete grade. Um, you can do it as text or as a recorded video or a blog entry or, or a file, whatever you want to do. Just kind of tell me what you did this week and how it went. And uh, that's a, a chance for me to see if things are not going well or if you didn't do anything or if you don't turn this in. That's something that I will follow up about to find out what happened and, and figure out how to get you back on track with things if possible. So uh, please do these. They're um, complete or incomplete grade, um, low stakes individually, but they're very important in terms of like helping me 
feel confident that you're getting the things that I want you to do for this class. Uh, so please do those. And uh, I sent out a survey. Yeah, this I did. Did I send this? I think I did. I've lost my Slack window, but um, I think I sent this in Slack. So going to my other window here. Yeah, I sent this a while back. You have to scroll up a bit in Slack, but I sent this. I, basically, I want to make sure that people are getting things and, and seeing them. And some of you obviously are watching on the stream right now. Um, if there's anyone who's not here or if you're watching it later, I still want to see kind of how you're doing and what kinds of access, what kind of access you have right now to technology and other materials. Um, this is kind of like those weekly summary things. If you don't reply to this form, like if you don't reply to the survey, then I'll probably want to follow up and figure out um, what's going on. Um, yeah, so Aaron, you just noticed that you're looking forward to everything online because of being an introvert. Yeah, I, um, I kind of feel the same way, to be honest. I mean, I like seeing you all and having class, but it's, um, it is a lot. So uh, there are some advantages to being online. Um, you know, whenever it's possible, whenever that can be accommodated. Uh, so, of course, there are some challenges. There are different kinds of access or different ways, different challenges to access. So I want to make sure everyone's being taken care of. Um, okay, so I want to wrap up in a few minutes. Uh, I've gone for about 30 minutes here, maybe even a little longer than I meant to. Um, so if you have any questions for me at all, uh, try to ask them now so I can answer them on the stream. And while you're thinking of any of those, you just want to go over how to contact me. Uh, so I've got some information on my contact page, uh, some new information. I've got two email addresses, but I prefer the UMW one if possible. I'm on Twitter if you feel like following me. Um, I'm on Facebook, but I don't really check it very often. Um, this is the link to my YouTube channel, and this is the link to my Twitch stream. That should be correct. Let's make sure that's correct. Yep, that's me. Um, don't want to see myself seeing myself. Uh, oh, where was I? Um, yeah, so I am going to be on campus a lot, but they're telling us not to meet in person if possible. So if you would like to have a, a meeting, though, or a conference, you can go here to book now, and there's three different kinds of meetings you can select. You've got, um, well, I'll go back here, a uh, text-based conference. So that could be a chat in Slack or something else um, that we may be able to connect in, like Google or um, Discord or something like that, whatever we're already connected in, ideally. Uh, a video conference, um, I would recommend using the whereby thing. And then audiovisual, if there's something else, like if there's some other tool that you'd like to use, that's fine. And, and in those cases, I'll make sure what's going on. And Devin, yes, that's the idea, is that these will be due at the end of every week as a way to kind of do the weekly check-in and make sure you're keeping on top of things. Um, so it's it's meant to be a, a, not really a report, like a progress report, but just a, a kind of here's where I am, right? Um, so Aaron's asking if I've heard anything about shutting down the campus soon. I have not heard that. Um, it depends on what you mean by shutting down, but um, currently classes are canceled. Certain buildings are, well, all the buildings are technically open, but some parts of some buildings are closed. So, uh, for example, in Combs, all the classrooms have been uh, disinfected, sterilized, and they've asked us not to go in those. Um, I have not heard that about HCC classrooms. Obviously, I'm in one right now. Um, if they do tell me not to come back to this room or somebody tells me to, then, you know, then that's the case. Then I, I won't be here. But um, yeah, as far as I know, campus is still planning to remain open. So if you need to get here, like to use the internet, for example, uh, and, you're, and you're able to do that, then I think you still can. Um, so let's see. All right, so Abby had a question about, or Abby just noted that she's interested in seeing results in WordPress. Um, I don't know if you mean analytics, but I can talk about that. Um, also, though, the, one of the things that we are still definitely working toward in this class is building your website and your domain. Um, that'll still be the final thing that you do for this class. So that's still happening uh, pretty much the same way. OK, so yeah, I'm going to wrap it up pretty soon. So if there's any more questions, try to get them in. Um, and then I'm going to archive this. Um, like It'll be archived in Twitch for a while, but then um, I'll, I'll put it on YouTube as well, which will be a more, uh, more permanent archive for this. So you know, yeah. I don't, know, I, don't know what else, I don't know what else to say. Hope you all are doing okay. This whole situation is challenging and stressful. Um, a lot of anxiety out there right now uh, as people are trying to figure out what to do and, and how things are going to be going forward. Um, but you know, for now, we were able to talk this way, and that seems to have worked for many people, for a lot of you, so that's good. And um, we'll have other ways to, to do that, too, going forward. 
All right, so I am going to shut this down. If you have any questions, you've seen the different ways that you can reach out to me, so please do that. Um, Slack is also a pretty decent way to do that in case it's a question that other people might want to hear too. So like if you want to just put that into the DGST 101 channel in Slack, uh, that would be a good way for me to respond to some of those questions that might be more general. So, okay, well, I'm going to shut this down. Uh, thanks for tuning in if you got to do that, or thanks for watching later if that's how you're doing it. And I will see you. I'll do another one of these on Wednesday, and I'll, I'll send out a new link through email to make sure that it's, you know, the right link so <laughs> that we have that. Um, yeah, if you follow me on, on Twitch, you should see a notice pop up whenever I go live, I think. So maybe you could do that if you want to. All right, well, um, be well, stay safe, you know. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or issues or anything else you want to talk about. And I'll see you later. I'll shut this down. <laughs>